so we're live right now so just to let you know but if you hit a key uh, i'll probably be back in a couple minutes to talk Hey, welcome everybody. Wednesday well, night Vesper service. Um, we're glad that you're here. I know there's a few of you here already. So we'll get started. Top of the hour. Just for a reminder, no service next Wednesday for Holy Week, but we will be doing Thursday and Friday services right here on the Facebook Live channel. So look for us then. We'll get started here in a few minutes. So hang on tight. We'll be right back.
O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will be glory your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to
A reading from St. Matthew, the 27th chapter, beginning at verse 31. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were also many women there looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that impostor said, while he was still alive, After three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. 
So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Deliver me, O oh Lord, my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue. Continue with the Catechism, page 326 in your hymnals. Confession, how Christians should be taught to confess. What is the office of the keys? The, the office, office of, of the keys, keys is, is that special, special authority, authority which Christ has given to his church on earth to forgive the sins of repentant sinners, but to withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. Where is this written? This is what St. John the Evangelist writes in chapter 20. The Lord Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. What do you believe according to these words? I believe that when the called ministers of Christ deal with us by his divine command, in particular when they exclude openly unrepentant sinners from the Christian congregation and absolve those who repent of their sins and want to do better, this is just as valid and certain even in heaven as if Christ, our dear Lord, dealt with us himself. The text for the sermon this evening is St. Matthew 27 through 31, or chapter 27, 31 through 66, where Jesus is crucified, dies, and is buried. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So much packed into our text tonight. We have the one who carries the cross, the man of Cyrene, Simon by name. He is compelled to carry the cross of Christ. He did not want to. He was on his way back into town from the country, and they compelled this man to carry his cross. That's the way it is for all of us. God gives us crosses to bear, and he certainly has given us many crosses to bear um, during this time. That's not the part I'm going to talk about, though, tonight. There's also um, this wonderful little section in Matthew's Gospel alone where Matthew records that many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. I always thought that was interesting. And we don't hear much about it except for right here in St. Matthew's Gospel how Many of these saints who had fallen asleep, who were buried in Jerusalem, went to the holy city and were raised after Jesus rose from the dead. That's an interesting comment from St. Matthew's Gospel. We could spend a little time there. But tonight, what really struck me um, was a 
connection that we made earlier in the season of Epiphany, where Jesus was baptized, God the Father speaks from heaven and says, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And then Jesus is led by the Spirit out into the wilderness to be, or in order to be, tempted by the devil. And if you remember, the very first temptation from the devil, he, he goes right to town against Jesus. So God said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And the first words out of Satan's mouth, if you are the son of God. And if you remember the, if you are the son of God, it comes at a very interesting point in the temptation. Jesus had wandered in the wilderness for 40 days. So the season of Lent here <laughs> has, in a sense, been marked by fasting. We have, we've had to fast, we've had to take a break from so many things that we are used to, and we can't wait to get back to the things that we're, we're used to. You know, being around our friends and our family, and, and being around crowds, going to work and school, We've had to take a break from those things. But here, uh, if you remember, Jesus had to take a break. He fasted from food for 40 days. And so the tempter comes and says, if you are the Son of God, you can take advantage of the situation. All you have to do, if you are the Son of God, is to speak to these stones and command them to become loaves of bread. That's all you have to do, Jesus. But Jesus doesn't. He doesn't. He reminds, you know, Satan, of course, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And Jesus wants to remain human. The whole reason why Jesus came to become man was to suffer, to be tempted, just like we are in every way, to rely upon you know, others, and to rely upon food and drink and sleep and everything that we rely upon. He was tempted in every way, every way, and yet was without sin. Now, fast forward three years, our Lord is on the cross. He has proclaimed it, he has made it abundantly known that he is the Son of God. If you remember, um, in our text right here tonight, when the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. Likewise, the ones who were, who were reviling him and mocking him said, he said he was the Son of God. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now if he desires him, for he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. People knew what the claim was. Jesus was none other than the Son of God. He called him, he called God Father, my Father in heaven. And so the mocking, so similar to Satan, comes out from these men who are passing by, wagging their heads. You know, you kind of get the picture. Um, they're shaking their heads at Jesus. He looks so pitiful up on the cross. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So, it's a remarkable temptation. We, on the other hand, we follow the slightest temptation. We can't stand up against any of the devil's lies or his tricks, the way he manipulates us and goes against our flesh. We are so tempted and so easily fall. But our Lord, 40 days with no food, all you have to do is turn this stone into bread, eat it, and you'll be satisfied. Our Lord did not. And here on the cross, if you are the Son of God, come down. You don't have to be up on the cross suffering. You can show the world how strong you are. If you come down from the cross, then we will believe in you. We will believe that you are the Son of God. Just come down from the cross. But Jesus does not come down from the cross. He remains there because the whole reason why he became man was to suffer, to be there as it is written, right? That's what he said over and over again. 
It must go as it has been written. The Son of Man must suffer. And he does. Jesus stays on the cross for us. Jesus stays there for you. He stays there for me. The temptation that was so drastic here, he overcomes. And he stays there. He does not rely on his superhuman powers. He could have jumped off the cross. He could have ripped out the nails. He could have showed his might. But he didn't. He came for the sole purpose to take away our sins. He was not going to let this temptation stop his love for us. He was so selfless. He was not thinking about his wants or his desires, but only what was needed to take care of the sin of the world, to take away all of your sin, to take away all of my sin. The sins of the entire world were laid on this man's back, and he bore them all the way to the end. He did not come down from the cross, and that is good news for us. That became our salvation. We look back on it now. We look back and we see Jesus on the cross. And I know it's offensive to so many people, but Jesus on the cross is the most wonderful thing. Because we look at it through the lens of the resurrection. And we see that that was the perfect once for all sacrifice for all of us. So our shout today is not, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross, but stay on the cross. We want Jesus, we want to see Jesus there, suffering and dying for us. That was the perfect sacrifice to take away our sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue by singing the Magnificat, hymn number 933.
continue with prayer, the litany, page 288. O Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. O Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. O Lord, have, have mercy. O Christ, hear, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have, have mercy. mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare, Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help, Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, Good Lord, Lord deliver us. us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help, Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, Help, Help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to, to hear us, O Lord, to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are, and are deceived, to be down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We, we implore, implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings. To defend all orphans and widows and provide for them. To strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children. To free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. We, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant, grant us, us your, your peace. peace. O Christ, hear, hear us. us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts, that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The number 427. Church, great to have you here watching with us on YouTube um, or at Facebook. I'm sorry, um, but anyway, we look forward to seeing you again on Sunday. We will live stream the service then, and then we will get the word out over email about plans for um, Holy Week and Easter. Um, unfortunately, again, we, we will most likely not be able to gather together. We look forward to that time when we can be together again and, and enjoy each other each other's company. But for now. Um, 
Thank you to Tim and to Rachel for their work um, in bringing the live stream to you. God's peace be with you, and, and we'll see you next time.